Welcome to Florida Spring Breakers and your parents. In this video, we're going to talk about what you can do at SeaWorld Orlando while you're here on spring break. SeaWorld Orlando is a great place to come on spring break where you get to enjoy fun, play, learn and uh, who wants to learn on spring break but you do you get to learn a few things while you're here as well but it's in a fun and engaging way so SeaWorld is the perfect place to spend your spring break holiday for parents whether you have kids who are preschool or just beginning school or if you have that teenager who is always looking for something to do SeaWorld has something for everyone so let's get started by talking about what you can do here at SeaWorld. So I have popped up on the screen the map for SeaWorld Orlando. So you can see there is a lot of places to go, lots of things to do, and we're gonna try to break that down a little bit for you based on age. So we're gonna be looking at the ages of three to six, six to 12, and 12 to 15. Now, let me begin by talking about the rides here at SeaWorld Orlando animals lots of people know about that but the rides there are height restrictions for that so let's lay that out for you right now so you know what those heights are we'll have that done and we'll move on with the video now the reason I bring this up is because I've seen so many parents come with their kids to the park and a little six seven year old thinks he's gonna get to ride Mako but unfortunately you have to be a certain height to ride Mako and this is all for safety reasons so there are rules in place for the height a person has to be, the minimum height they have to be in order to ride certain rides. So let's begin with the little guys. So if you have a child who is between 36 and 38 inches, they'll be able to ride Super Grover's Boxcar Derby in Sesame Street and the Elmo's Choo Choo Train. That is specifically for kids who are 36 inches. So if you have a kid who's young, but they're just 38 inches, 39 inches, they can ride their first roller coaster, which is Super Grover's Boxcar Derby. It's a cute coaster. Now, if you have a kid who is 42 inches, that expands what they can do dramatically. So they can ride Infinity Falls. They can ride Journey to Atlantis, which is a water flume coaster combination thing. It's really cool. They can ride Penguin Trek when it opens. This probably won't happen during spring break of 2024, but if you come back 2025, they should be able to ride Penguin Trek. In Sesame Street, they can ride Slimy Slider, the Cookie Drop, Abby's Flower Tower, and they can ride the Carousel. Now, a few of these do require that if the child is 42 inches, that they have an adult who rides with them. If your child has reached the height of 48 inches, they can ride the Sky Tower and their first big coaster, Icebreaker. Now, for anyone 54 inches and taller, you could ride Manta, Kraken, Mako, and Pipeline. And there's one last caveat, the paddle boats, you can ride them with your kids, but your child has to be 56 inches in order to ride the paddle boats by themselves. Now on the opposite side of this, there are some height maximums for a couple of rides. The biggest of those is pipeline. Also for pipeline, especially an icebreaker, if you have a larger chest circumference, then that may make it difficult as well to ride these two rides just because of the safety restraints that they have in place. So make sure to check the test seats when you get there to see if your child or young person is able to ride the rides. So let's move on to talk about what your kids can do. So if you have a child who is between three and six years old, so that preschool, just starting school age, here are some things that I suggest for you and your child to enjoy SeaWorld. Now, first off, I suggest you only pick one of the shows to do. There are three great shows, Dolphin Encounter, Sea Lion and Otter Spotlight, and Orca Encounter. But timing wise, you may not be able to do all of them. So I suggest picking just one to start with, and if your child isn't too tired, add another one later in the day. So I suggest The Dolphin Encounter. It's a really fun show. It's cool to watch. You learn a lot about dolphins. You get to see them jump way out of the air, and it just it's, it's a great show. So I highly recommend that one. And while you're on that side of the park, 
you should definitely take your kids to see the stingrays because you can actually get to touch and feel the slimy slippery skin of a stingray it, it's the weirdest uh, sensation to feel those guys but you can check them out you can see the dolphins you can then go and see manatees and sea turtles that have been rescued you can then head over and see the penguins and maybe if you wanted to feed some sea lions that would be fun. The penguins potentially may be closed at the moment. The last time I was there uh, here in 2024, you had to go wait in a back door. It's a little bit weird, but just look for signs or ask an ambassador. They might be able to tell you where to go. But because Penguin Trek, the coaster is coming, it's a chance they may have closed it down to do some refurbishment on the inside. But hopefully you can see penguins, but you can definitely see the sea lions and generally you get to feed them. There's a few times where they don't let you feed, uh, like usually early in the morning. So if you go more towards the afternoon, you might have a chance of feeding them. Next on the agenda, I would have a snack and then have that show. So you're already on this side of the park, head back over, hit Dolphin Stadium, watch Dolphin Encounter, and then I would suggest walking around the park over to see the sharks, go inside, look at the shark encounter, a lot of fun, and then mose your way around to Sesame Street where there's some fun rides to do, games to play, interactive things that you can do with in Sesame Street. You can see one of the Sesame Street characters possibly, and you can enjoy Sesame Street and play for a little while and then regroup, decide, hey, what should we do? And then go from there if you want to do another show. But make sure to add snacks throughout. I know little kids, they like their snacks. They just need a little bit to keep them going. Uh, so yeah, just, yeah, you know your kid. Keep them happy as you move through the park. Now for kids who are six to 12, I highly recommend the sea lion feeding, especially for them. The three to six year olds would have fun just watching. They might be a little too too small to be able to actually toss the food, but those, a child who is six to 12, they will have so much fun getting to feed a sea lion. That would be amazing experience, memorable experience for them. So highly recommend that. Possibly with a six to 12 year old, you might be able to hit all three shows. So in order of importance i suppose i would definitely do dolphin first that one has a show early in the day you can get to so for sure you'll be able to see a show if rain comes in later in the afternoon then i hate to have you hop across the park but i would i'd go see orca encounter you gotta see these magnificent whales they're amazing i've been going to SeaWorld for years and just enjoy learning about the orcas and getting to see their behaviors that they do so check them out and then if time permits see sea lion and otter stadium with the sea lion spotlight it's a great show it was a little lacking in humor for a little while the humor has increased again and they have a mime who will kind of entertain before the show begins now if you have that six to twelve year old they may be tall enough to do a few of the rides now of course some kids don't like to do rides no worries on that one. At least, if you can, maybe do the Sky Tower. If you're an annual pass holder, you can get onto the Sky Tower for free. Unfortunately, anyone else, you do have to pay $5 in order to ride the Sky Tower, but it is an amazing view over the top of the park. And I highly recommend it. Other rides I would say are fun are Infinity Falls. That was a lot of fun. You have a, like a fifth, no, nah, I was gonna say you have a 50, 50 chance of getting wet. Most likely you will get wet. There's little waterfall things that come over the top. There's water splashing in from the side. So most likely you're going to get wet. Maybe not drenched, but you will get wet. Throughout the park as well, they do keeper talks. And I would definitely encourage this for the child who's six to 12 in elementary school learning, but it's a fun way to learn about the animals. So I think one, a couple of the best ones are the manatee and turtle rescue area. The manatee talk, that one's very good. Also the sea lion talk, I like that one as well. And uh, I believe sometimes they do dolphin, that one can be a little bit harder to hear sometimes depending on where you're at. And occasionally they also do one in wild Arctic. I haven't gotten to hear that one yet. Uh, we went to hear it one time and no one showed up, so I'm not sure what that was about, but uh, something changed on the schedule so they, they didn't do it. And be prepared if there's an issue with animals or something going on, they may have to cancel that or reschedule. So just be aware of that when you look at the schedule. Now, if you're coming with that teenager who, especially a teenager who wants to ride rides, <laughs> um, you can get into the park at 9 a.m. So get there early. If you have a kid who really wants to ride rides, get there early, 
because they're buying the Quick Q Unlimited, so they can write as many times as they want. Especially if they have one that they really like, they can just ride and ride and ride and ride and ride. But I highly advise getting there to the park early. So the park kind of opens in stages. So you kind of come into the main area of the park towards uh, the dolphins and out towards Kraken, which is out towards the left side. So I think the three coasters that open first are Manta, usually is open pretty early, right away. Uh, I believe Pipeline opens very close to opening time of the park, and then Kraken is generally open as well. Journey to Atlantis might also be open. Last time I was there, it's being refurbished, but spring break should be open. So you can hit those four coasters early on. And then I believe you can also hit Mako early on. And then it's just a small delay, and then you can come around the park. Infinity Falls will then be open, and Icebreaker will be open. So those two, for sure, are the ones you have to wait a little bit longer to be able to ride. Uh, I think it's usually an hour after park opens, so that side of the park opens up, and then you can go and ride Infinity Falls and Icebreaker. But that Quick Queue Unlimited is fantastic for kids who just want to ride and ride and ride and ride. They don't really want to maybe see any shows, do anything else. They just want to ride, so highly recommend that. Now, if you are planning on coming all day, I know they have the all day dining, but so many people are buying that now that it's kind of hectic and you might not get your money's worth. Or if you have a kid who doesn't, is a really picky eater, it might not really be worth it for you guys to do that. So consider your options. They're discouraging bringing food into the park. They'll have maybe a little few snacks go through occasionally, but they're not really wanting all your food coming into the park. They're wanting you to purchase from the park. So worst case scenario, you could bring food with you, then go out to the parking lot, eat, then re-enter the park. But with spring break, crowds are so big sometimes during spring break, depends on the time, that that might not really be an option for you. So plan on maybe some snacks, keep it a little bit cheaper, rather than doing the all day dining where you'll stand in line for a long time waiting for food sometimes. Uh, if you have little kids who are a little bit impatient, you have to wait a long time, might not be the best bet. There are some cute little food areas over in Sesame Street. We can get some quick bites there. So that might be a better option. And I highly recommend the pretzel kitchen, fantastic pretzels, very good. That might be a better option rather than having to wait in long lines for all day dining. Now, if you have a child or teenager who is extremely interested in sea life or possibly becoming an animal trainer or care specialist in the future, consider booking a trainer for a day tour. They have the amazing tours at SeaWorld Orlando, and this one is geared specifically towards people who are maybe interested in just that experience. You know, what does a trainer do in a day? And that might be a fun experience for a little one or older one who is slightly interested in what happens behind the scenes at SeaWorld Orlando and would like to experience that for themselves. Also, if you have that little or bigger one who is fascinated by penguins, walruses, dolphins, belugas, sharks, sea lions, or orcas, consider booking an encounter or up-close tour. And you definitely want to do that here pretty soon because many times those do sell out or the price increases the closer you get to the time. So you kind of look at that now and get an idea of which one you think you might want to do and go ahead and hit book on that. Now, one thing that I highly recommend is the dining with orcas. So maybe if you don't have time to see the orca show, but you want to be able to see the orcas, dining with orcas is a great way to have a meal. It's brought to you, you sit at a table, the food is brought to you, and you get to sit poolside and watch the orcas swim around. There'll be a short presentation uh, talking about the orcas and how SeaWorld works to care for them, and you get to enjoy a great meal while you're there. So that might be a great way to relax, not have to wait in line for food so I highly recommend that it's only at one time a day I believe it's at 1230 so you get there about 12 15 ish be able to go in and it's a fantastic experience I highly recommend dining with orcas so SeaWorld has a lot to offer in ways of rides and shows and amazing places to see. I didn't even mention Dolphin Nursery, the aquariums, there's three aqua different aquariums and of course there's wild arctic where you can see the walruses and the belugas but it's a fantastic place hopefully you and your family will have an amazing time when you visit SeaWorld Orlando if you have any questions about SeaWorld please let me know down in the comments and if you'd like to know other places you should visit during the spring break let me know and we'll make a video about that as well thank you so much for watching Ant on the Move we'll talk to you guys next time